is our prayer, Lord. Your words are ever true. Let your teaching fall like rain. Your words descend like dew, like showers on new grass and abundant rain on tender plants. Let it refresh, renew, and restore each and every one of us. Lord, let your word change us. Andavare engle matra to mandavare. Naangal enraiki kattu kala pogira umudiya sattiya mandavare. Engle innum andavare parisutta padutham inmintre naangal chabikrom. Engle ke sindhi kare sindhani parisutta padutham. Give us, Lord, ears to hear and hearts that are inclined to obey the voice of God and God alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I start the sermon, I just want to make uh, some introductory comments because this past week was a very significant week in the life of uh, every Indian. I suppose that you are very happy, you are not. Chandra Ryan, August 23rd, 6.04 p.m. AM, uh, p.m. in India, landed very safely, the lunar module soft landing. And the reason why you and I can be a very happy Indian is because I think few months ago, Russia could not land safely. They failed and America is still working on it, trying to get their lunar module out there. Another reason why I wanted to say this is, uh, I have a very personal connection with this, with this uh, Chandra Ryan uh, 3. Yen and Ral, uh, because of my marriage through uh, Sister Preeti and uh, the, my dear mother-in-law who was seated there, yeah, it came as a shock to me and it was being revealed to me that we are very much related to one of the key scientists and the pictures are all over the media and she's a lady and she is instrumental, one of the key scientists from Tamil Nadu, instrumental in Chandrarayan Mission 2, Mission 3 and she has been applauded all over. So, the point is, there is no touch at all with that Sundakaranga. And in fact, the truth is, she is supposed to be my mother-in-law's godchild. Oh, godchild, you are godchild, you are godchild scientist, you are godchild scientist, you are godchild scientist, but you know, I'm going to touch you. 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 Because of certain situations and the experiences that they went through, they were so close and gave her as a godchild. But at the same time, I'm going to touch you. 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 But uh, it's a real fact. So I know it's being recorded on uh, media. So if anybody fact checks, I have proof. I have all the pictures, everything that I'm speaking is truth. So, Sonda Karanga Teriyad. Yedgaga, they introduced Panana. The Sonda Karanga in the family, Lanam Peria problems, they were all. The family problems. Did I say family problems? Yes. Family problems is the title of my message today. Not only in other places we have problems at work or at church, but family problems is integral to every society, every family. And we have to get into the ancient words to look at one major family problem that uh, we are going to see and uh, unearth three principles for us to live by. And that comes from a minor prophet called Obadaya. Obadaya in repair Cholambolade, the meaning of the word Obadaya means servant of the Lord. Servant of the Lord is the meaning of the word Obadaya. And I'm sure the kids would be able to say what are the 12 minor prophets that we look at after uh, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Yes, 12? Did I do it right? Yeah. So 12 of them. And initially they were all in one book. But then they split into several books. And many of us don't look at the minor prophets. Minor prophets are minor. Major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. major But the minor prophets have major messages to convey to us. And these are life-altering principles that we need to follow. So in the Obadaya Odiya story in our Park Noel, let's look at the family problem first. Where was the family problem started? Yenge in the Kuruma Prachanai Arambikrade. Adavande. Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 to 34, it starts right there in the womb. 
the family were veliya vandu prachana panna kuda appala oomble aarambichirudhu if you look at chapter 25 verses 19 to 34 what happens is you know isaac it's account of isaac isaac prayed to the lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless answered his prayer she became pregnant babies jostled with each other within her twins ullave rendu perum modikittundanga why is this happening to me so she went to inquire of the lord see even twins are there they should be calm i think i suppose i suppose that they should be calm but there are times when they start uh, really um another being aggressive with one another so she goes to inquire of the lord and then the lord says two nations are in your womb rendu desangal ungalude idile irukirathu and uh, and two peoples from within you will be separated one people will be stronger than the other or kutam not and the older will serve the younger when the time came for her to give birth there were twin boys in her womb the first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment so they named him esau after this his brother came out with his hand grasping esau's heel i just imagine appi nee mundittu poriya un kaale pudichu na ilukuren ulla va அதுக்கு அப்புறம் தான் நான் நீ வரணும்ன்ட்டு ஏதோ பண்ண ஆஃப்டர் தென் இஸ் பிரதர் கேம் அவுட் வித் இஸ் ஹேண்ட் கிராஸ்பிங் ஈஸ் அ சீல் ஸோ யூ வாஸ் நேம் ஜேக்கப் ஐசக் வாஸ் சிக்ஸ்டி இயர்ஸ் ஓல்ட் வென் ரிபேக்கா கேவ் பர்த் டு தம் ஸோ இட் ஸ்டார்ட்ஸ் வித் ஈஸா அண்ட் ஜேக்கப் ஹூ வேர் ஆக்சுவலி ஆல்சோ இன்ஹெரிட்டர்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ப்ராமிஸ் தட் வாஸ் கிவன் டு ஏப்ரஹாம் ஹூ வாஸ் ஐசக் ஐசக் வாஸ் அ சன் ஆஃப் த ப்ராமிஸ் சன் ஆஃப் ஏப்ரஹாம் ஸோ இட் கம்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் தேர் அண்ட் காட் டோல்ட் ஏப்ரஹாம் தட் ஹீ வில் பிளஸ் பிளஸ் ஆல் ஆஃப் இஸ் டிசெண்டன்ஸ் ஈசா என்ற பேர் வந்து நிக் நேம் ஃபார் ஹிம் இஸ் ஈடாம் ஈடாம் தான் அவனோட நிக் நேம் நிக் நேம் இஸ் ஈடாம் அண்ட் த நேம் அண்ட் த மீனிங் ஆஃப் ஈடாம் இஸ் ரெட் கம்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் டூ டூ ஆஃப் த திங்ஸ் அட் ஹேப்பன்ஸ் இன் ஈசாஸ் லைஃப் ஒன் இஸ் த ரெட் ஹேரி கார்மெண்ட் ஹி வாஸ் தட்ஸ் வாட் இட் சேஸ் ஹி கேம் அவுட் அண்ட் ஹி ஹி ஹேட் ஹேரி கார்மெண்ட் இஸ் whole body was like a hairy garment red and second thing was a red stew stew mutton the what and the when he uh, deceived his father to get the blessing he made a stew and then the red color are in the cha so uh, that's what they say why he was called he was nicknamed as edom and we know what happened uh, the story uh, continues there we know that he was sent out and he was not pleasing to his parents adalan theriyum so people coming from those two generations from Esau and Jacob were always hostile against each other avanga rendu perkum kuduma prachana rendu brothers and it starts with their generation so sometimes when we face situations in life family problems in life we should not just look at only our family as a nucleus family we should actually look at beyond to see whether there have been similar incidences or similar things that have transpired it could be passed on and we should be careful to know is there something that has happened in the past that is being carried on one of those things is you may be surprised that i'm saying this anger kobam namba romba kovapadrom kovapadrom solite irundalo you also must think back is is it kind of chronic in our family are there ancestors parents 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 do they do the are they short tempered or long tempered whatever you need to check and then when you know you know that something has been passed on to you and the only person that can redeem you from that that is why when you encounter jesus that is subject to change he changes that you do not have to continue to carry that gene in you and say ah enga avanga koppatta nanu abdi irukano illa but jesus can change you that is why jesus makes a difference so this family problem continues and uh, what happens here is we see that obadaya who is this um, wonderful prophet who is writing as a vision as uh, was read so beautifully by sahana nan tamil la konjam vaasikira ena she read it in english obadaya vin darisanam kartragi aandavar edho mai kurithu solugirathu enna vendral elumungal adarku virodhamaga yuttam panna எலும்புவோம் வாருங்கள் என்று அறிவிக்க ஸ்தானாதிபதி ஜாதிகளத்தில் அனுப்பப்படும் செய்தியை கர்த்தர் சொல்ல கேட்டோம் இதோ நான் என்னை ஜாதிகளில் சிறுக பண்ணினேன் நீ மெத்தவும் அசட்டை பண்ணப்பட்டிருக்கிறாய் கண்மலை வெட்டி புகழாகிய உன் உயர்ந்த ஸ்தானத்திலே குடியிருந்து என்னை தரையிலே விழுத்தழுகிறவன் என்று உன் இருதயத்தில் சொல்லுகிறவனே உன் இருதயத்தின் அகந்தை உன்னை மோசம் போக்குகிறது என்று இப்படியாக எழுதப்பட்டிருக்கிறது ஸோ வாட் ஐம் கோயின் டூ ஐம் கோயின் டு ரீட் ஃபார் அஸ் 
this prophecy that Obadiah is proclaiming, and from there we are going to look at three principles, as I said. Three principles from there. And I'm not going to look at all the verses. I'm going to look at only some of the verses that um, uh, will highlight those principles. But I'm going to just read what's happening. It's Obadiah is now as a servant of the Lord proclaiming Edom's destruction. Edom, yeah, and the Esau in Valile Vanda and the Ido and the and the Janakuta destruction. This is what the sovereign Lord says about Edom. We have heard a message from the Lord, an envoy was sent to the nations to say, Let us go against her for battle and rest. So they the scholars say that yes, yeah, there could have been a particular person or a particular mission that was uh, being accomplished here. And let us go against her, against whom? Against Edom. And then see, I will make you small among the nations. You will be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You, you who live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home on the heights. And in English it's translated as the pride of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the clefts of the rocks and make your home on the heights. You who say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. If thieves came to you, if robbers in the night, oh, what a disaster awaits you. Would they not steal only as much as they wanted? If grape pickers come to you, would they not leave a few grapes? But how ye saw, you will be ransacked, your treasures will be pillaged. So, See, even when the thieves come, your, the pride of your heart has deceived you. You are going to be utterly despised and destroyed. You think you are like an eagle. You soar like an eagle. And you are saying, who can bring me to the ground? And the I live in the clefts of the rocks. You are living in pride that is deceiving you and I am going to bring destruction on you. Thieves, the thieves come to you. Grape pickers come to They will leave some of the grapes for other people. But you know what? It's going to be more disastrous for you. It's not only going they are going to take away what they only want. They are still going to come utterly destroy you. And actually, all your allies, these will be ransacked. Then uh, verse 7, all your allies will force you to the border. Your friends will deceive and overpower you. See, another thing that's being said about this is, Edom thought she had a lot of friends as neighboring nations that they will come and support Edom. So they thought that, oh, I have so many friends to support me. Nobody can do anything to me. I will not be destroyed. But you're thinking that they are going to come, they will, the allies will force you to the border, your friends will deceive and overpower you, and also those who eat your bread will set a trap for you, but you will not detect it. Verse 7, Unnode covenant people they are part of your family they all said we are making covenant with you we will help you we will make sure that you are safe and you are protected but he's saying unnode samadhanamai irundha manushar unnai mosam poki unnai merkondargal un appathai saapittavargal unakku keele kanni veithargal avanukku unarvillai so edom you are going to be utterly destroyed now why why edom is going to be destroyed then if you continue, as I said, because of time, I'm not going to read all these verses. It goes on to say, your warriors, Timon, will be terrified. They thought that they could handle everything. It could not. And then in verse 10, Patadasana, because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. 
So Edomites, as I told you, were descendants of Esau. And uh, what um, Obadiah is writing was fulfilled. And I'll tell you what are those verses that fulfilled, uh, which fulfilled this. This is the first one. Because of the violence against your brother Jacob, you will be covered with shame. You will be destroyed forever. And that happened in, uh, uh, during the time when Edom had the upper hand against Israel and Judah. And uh, Jacob, who is called Israel, and he goes on to say that on that day, this is what you did. You stood aloof while strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his tents. It is your brother Jacob, Israel. People came against Israel, your brother. Nations came to get them, came to destroy them. But you, Edom, what did you do? You did not care for them. You did not care for them. For this, we need to go back to the story. Actually, in Amos, uh, Amos chapter 1, Amos, Amos, he's another minor prophet, and he writes in 1, 11 to 12, for three sins of Edom, even for four I will not relent. Because he pursued his brother with the sword and slaughtered the women of the land. Because his anger raged continually and his fury flamed unchecked. So what happened? He, Edom itself went against the brother. They went to destroy them. And when other nations went against Israel... They did not help them. So the first principle that we are going to look at from this text is, and I'm going to take you back to another story to tell you what Edom actually did, why they are now being taken to task. The first thing, in our family relationships, in our relationships with one another, it's not only our immediate family which we call brothers and sisters, we are called to love each and every one of us as brothers and sisters. But we know within our family, our blood relations, there are so many problems that happen. You know of stories where people who grew up in the same family with their mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, sometimes after they grow up, they totally ignore their brother. They don't even have a speaking relationship with the brothers and sisters. Or sometimes I've heard of people where Children don't even talk to the mother or the father. Even recently I heard of, I know of a particular incident where I know this family where the, ma, the son did not even attend the funeral of the father. Relationships are very uh, sensitive and very critical and that is why we need to guard it with all of our heart. Be very careful as to how we communicate within uh, the inter the, in the interactions and the relationship that we have. What happened with Edom? What did they do? J we'll look at Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Adali nam parkum bolude. Numbers 20, verses 14 through 21 la parkum bolude. Ipadi yaga narakrade. Moses, they are just coming out of the wilderness and entering into the promised land in the process, Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom saying, this is what your brother Israel says. You know about all the hardships that have come over us, come on us. Our ancestors went down into Egypt. We lived there many years. The Egyptians mistreated us and our ancestors. But when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our cry and he sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Now we are here at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Now Moses, the Israelites are walking and Edom is, all, is the nation there and he's sending a message. And he's, this is what he's asking. Please let us pass through your country. We will not go through any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. Nangal onnu edukamaatam, thanni kuda kudikamaatam. We will travel along the king's highway and not turn to the right or to the left until we have passed through your territory. You know what? Just give us permission. 
just to walk. It's like probably the aerospace, you know, nowadays you cannot infiltrate into another country's space. You've got to uh, get permission from the other country if you want to infiltrate, because if you do, they will shoot the plane down, right? It's kind of a similar situation where he's asking permission. Edom answered, you may not pass through here. If you try, we will march out and attack you with the sword. The Israelites replied, we will go along the main road and if we or our, <coughs> if we or our livestock drink any of your water, we will pay for it. <laughs> they pay for water even then. Interesting. We only want to pass through on foot, nothing else. Beg pandranga, tanni kuda kudikka maata, tanni kudicha kuda kaas kudukrom. You may not pass through. Then Edom came out against them with a large and powerful army. Since Edom refused to let them go through their territory, Israel turned away from them. And when this happened, in Deuteronomy, God tells Jacob, though your brother did this evil to you, you should not take revenge. He told Israel. He said, Jacob, Israel, your brother did something wrong to you. They did not even let you pass through. But I do not want you to do anything to them. You know why? Because God had a plan. He said he was going to avenge for his people. One of the things that we can learn from this is that God takes note of everything that happens in our life and that he will avenge for us whatever evil is being done against us. But the first principle I want to lay before you that we learn from Obadiah's uh, story or Obadiah's prophecy and from this particular text, text in our relationships with one another, in our family relationships with one another, number one, do not ignore your brothers or your sisters. Do not neglect them. Pay attention to them. Because if you ignore them, and even here, it's said that it is because of the pride of the heart has deceived Edom. Sometimes we need to check whether this is the pride is going to deceive us and we will ignore our brothers and our sisters. We should not do that because God will take or he will avenge for the helpless people. And if you look at this, why should you not do it? In Proverbs 3.27 and James 4.17, it talks about this. If you do not withhold good from anyone when it is within your power to do it, and then when you know to do what is good and you do not do it, it is sin for you. In the end of Proverbs, James, when you do not do what you are able to do with the ability that God has given you, God says it is sin. If you withhold good from your dear brothers and sisters, not only within your family relationship, but even with the church family, when you know that there is a need, it, it's going to be construed as sinning against God. Do not ignore. Do not ignore. Pay attention. That's the first principle. Because this is what uh, Edom did. They did not allow them. But God said, no, you don't do anything. I will take care of this. And this is what, this is now the proclamation is coming that they will be destroyed. That's number one. And uh, you should not, then the second principle, and um, 11, on that day, you stood aloof while strangers carried off his wealth, foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem. You were like one of them. You should not. You should not gloat over your brother in the day of his misfortune, nor rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor boast so much in the day of their trouble. You know, we all have this inherent evil attitude. Namakke yarachon tappu senjitangna namo unme seyamato. Ana konjena alkalicha ungalke tingi nanda namo hatukla. Aha. See, I have God. He is getting you right. God's saying, you cannot even feel like that. 
அந்த மாதிரியான சிந்தை கூட நமக்குள்ளே இருக்கக்கூடாது யூ ஷுட் நாட் க்ளோட் ஆர் யூ ஷுட் நாட் ரிஜாய்ஸ் இன் த டே ஆஃப் அ மிஸ் ஃபார்ச்சூன் ஃபார் யோர் பிரதர் ஈவன் தோ யோர் பிரதர் ஆர் அ சிஸ்டர் ஹேஸ் டன் சம்திங் ராங் டு யூ அவங்க தப்பு செஞ்சாலும் அவங்களுக்கு ஏதாவது தப்பு நடக்கும் போது ஆண்டவரே அவங்கள இஃப் இஸ் ஹேண்ட்லிங் தேம் you know it's a very difficult concept so this is the second principle i want to lay before us do not gloat over or do not rejoice over other people's misfortune even if they are being dealt by god if god is dealing with them too don't rejoice but what should you do romans 12 15 tells you rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn you know no matter what and in my experience in life in our experience in our life we have seen you know many people will come to help you when you are down in the dumps but when you are in a time when you are rejoicing when you are doing well not many people will come close to you but the scripture says rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn that is the scriptural injunction so the first principle i told you do not ignore your brother or your sister's plight second do not rejoice over their misfortune but you need to rejoice with those who rejoice and you need to mourn with those who mourn be with the people be with your family be with your brothers and your sisters and your parents and your grandparents and your loved ones be with them and that is what he says do you you cannot do it you should not do it for the day of the lord is near for all nations so this is talking about for all nations the day of the lord in the chalumbode there is going to be a time when god is going to set everything right justfully and that is coming and then you see this principle as you have done it will be done to you your deeds will return upon your own head just as you drank on my holy hill so all the nations will drink continually they will drink and drink and be as if they had never been and it goes on to say but on mount zion will be deliverance it will be holy and jacob will possess his inheritance 15th verse i am going to say எல்லா ஜாதிகளுக்கும் விரோதமான நாளாகிய கர்த்தருடைய நாள் வருகிறது சமீபமாய் வந்திருக்கிறது நீ செய்தபடியே உனக்கும் செய்யப்படும் உன் செய்கையின் பலன் உன் தலையின் மேல் திரும்பும் நீங்கள் என் பரிசுத்த பர்வதத்தின் மேல் மதுபானம் பண்ணினபடியே எல்லா ஜாதிகளும் எப்பொழுதும் மதுபானம் பண்ணுவார்கள் அவர்கள் குடித்து விழுங்குவார்கள் ராதாவர்களை போல இருப்பார்கள் ஆனாலும் சியோன் பர்வதத்திலே தப்பி இருப்பார் உண்டு அவர்கள் பரிசுத்தமாக இருப்பார்கள் யாக்கோபின் வம்சத்தார் தங்களுடைய சுதந்திரங்களை சுதந்திரித்துக் கொள்வார்கள் யாக்கோபு வம்சத்தார் அக்கினியும் யோசிப்பு வம்சத்தார் அக்னி ஜுவாலியுமாக இருப்பார்கள் ஏசாவும் சத்தார் வைக்கோல் துரும்புமாக இருப்பார்கள் அவர்கள் இவர்களை கொளுத்து ஏசாவின் வம்சத்தில் மீதியாராதபடி இவர்களை பட்சிப்பார்கள் கர்த்தர் இதை சொன்னார் அதற்கு பிறகு திரும்ப சொல் தென் தேசத்தார் ஈசாவின் ஏசாவின் நிலையையும் அப்படி என்று சொல்லி ச ச எல்லாம் சொல்லிவிட்டு கடைசியாக ஏசாவின் பர்வதத்தை நியாயம் தீர்ப்பதற்காக இரட்சகர்கள் சியோன் பர்வதத்தில் வந்தேறுவார்கள் அப்பொழுது ராஜ்யம் கர்த்தருடையதாக இருக்கும் ஸோ ஒபதாயா இஸ் ரைட்டிங் அபவுட் ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் திங்ஸ் தட் ஹேப்பன்ட் தட் ஹஸ் பீன் ரெக்கார்டட் இன் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி இன் ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் டாக்குமெண்ட்ஸ் வார்ட்ஸ் தட் டுக் பிளேஸ் அண்ட் ஹவு இட் வாஸ் ஃபுல்ஃபில்ட் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் த ஃபியூச்சர் தட் தெர் இஸ் அ டைம் கமிங் தட் அண்ட் மவுண்ட் ஜாயின் தெல் பி டெலிவரன்ஸ் Jacob will be restored a Joseph flame Esau will be stubble and they will set him on fire and destroy him there will be no survivors from Esau in the chola padagirade obadaya mudha inda vasane 10th vasanathilum solla pattirukirade ena because of the violence against your Jacob you will be covered with shame you will be destroyed forever you will be destroyed forever endu solla pattirukirade idhiliyum paathina there will be no survivors from esau endu solla pattukirathu the lord has spoken idu eppodu nadandathu ad 66 70ala when the edom and the jews had a rebellion against rome they were thoroughly crushed and destroyed and even now ipo neenga poi paathina edom and the nation illa what obadiah prophesied was fulfilled it's done they are completely destroyed and then uh, the scripture goes on to say about how jacob will be restored 
and uh, the, they'll occupy the fields of Ephraim and Samaria. The company of Israelite exiles are in Canaan. They'll possess the land as far as Zarephath. Zarephath, think that's 287. The exiles from Jerusalem who are in Sepharad will possess the towns of the Negev. Deliverers will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau and the kingdom will be the Lord. It's talking about how in the future God is going to establish his kingdom. No nation, no people, nobody will be able to stand against him. So the first principle that I told you was this. The principle that you should not ignore do not ignore the plight of your brothers or your sisters. Do not rejoice over the other, other's misfortune when they fall down. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. The third principle is, as we read in that uh, verse 15, where it is saying, um, as you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return upon your own head. And the I am going to give you, as I said, as I was giving you, a New Testament uh, application, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. It is called the golden rule. Do unto others what you would have others to do to you. Because it's going to come back on your own head. It's going to come back on your own head. If you are going to laugh at anyone else's misfortune, one day that may happen to you. If we ignore other people, our dear brothers and sisters, some of the other people may ignore us. So stand in support of your brothers and your sisters in the family. As you see in the story of uh, Esau and Jacob, which is fulfilled in Obadiah, where Esau lost his birthright. Jacob, though he was a deceiver, because he encountered God himself, his name was changed to be called Israel, and he became the possessor of that promise. Let's pray. Anbin Paramatapane, we thank you, O oh God. Help us, Lord, to apply these principles in our lives. We know that you're a God who is true to your word. Enable us to care for one another, stand in support of one another, and carry each other's burdens and thus fulfill the law of Christ. Amen.